when I think of the cross, I think of the insults and the mockery that came from the crowd. I think of a painful 39 lashes and the excruciating pain from a thorn-filled crown. When I think of the cross, I, I think of brutal suffering ultimate sacrifice that Jesus willingly stepped into. You see, the greatest act of love is for the innocent to stand in place for the guilty. And that's exactly what Jesus did when he stood in place for you and me. It's what we call grace. And in a moment of grace, far beyond anything that we could ever comprehend. Jesus took on all our anger, all our anxiety, all our brokenness, all our pain, all our past, every single mistake, all our shame. He took on all the things that we try to carry, but they're just so heavy. But Jesus didn't come just to simply take those things. He came to give us freedom. Because of him, you're no longer lost to your past. Because of him, you're no longer a slave to your shame. Because of him, you're no longer a prisoner to your pain. Because of him, you're no longer bound to your sin. Because of Jesus, we can actually take these things and lay them down at the foot of the cross. See, God's love has liberated us, you and me free to forever walk in the light of his amazing grace. Well, good morning. Would you like to stand with us as we sing our first song together?
first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying, where will you have us prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, go to the city as to a certain man and say to him, the teacher says, my time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus had directed them and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at the table with the 12. And as they were eating, he said, truly I say to you, one of you will betray me. And they were very sorrowful and began to say to one another, is it I, Lord? And he answered, he who has dipped his hand in the dish with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for him that he had not been born. Judas would betray him, answered. Is it I, Rabbi? He said to him, you have said so. Now as they were eating, Jesus took bread, and after blessing it, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. And taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch with me. And going a little farther, he fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Now the chief priests and elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor again said to them, which of the two do you want me to release to you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, then what shall I do with Jesus who is called the Christ? They all said, let him be crucified. And he said, why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, let him be crucified. So Pilate saw, when Pilate saw that he was gaining nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took water and washed his hands before the crowd saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. And all the people answered, his blood be on us and on our children. And then he released for them Barabbas, having scourged Jesus, delivered, delivered him to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus to the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole battalion before him, and they stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and put a reed in his right hand, and kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they spit on him, and took the reed and struck him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the robe, put his own clothes on him, and led him away to be crucified. Please stand as we continue to worship. Mm-hmm. 
is this story. Listen to the words. I, I was a wretch. I remember who I was. I was lost. I was blind. I was running out of time. Sin separated. The breach was far too wide. From the far side of the chasm, you had me in your sight. So you made a way across the great divide, left behind heaven's throne to build it here inside. So there at the cross, you paid the debt. My chains freed my soul for the first time. I had hope. So thank you, Jesus, for the blood applied. Thank you, Jesus, it has washed me white. Thank you, Jesus.
but the blood of Jesus. Let's sing, oh, precious. charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, King of the Jews. Then two robbers were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. And those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads, saying, You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. So also the chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him, saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down now off the cross, and he will, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now if he desires him. For he said, I am the son of God. And the robbers who were crucified with him also reviled him in the same way. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lima sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, This man is calling Elijah. And one of them at once ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine, and put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth shook, and the rocks were split. The tombs were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. When the centurion and those who were with him keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what had taken place, they were filled with awe and said, Truly, this was the Son of God. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hide their face, he was despised and esteemed him, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by many, and afflicted. 
but he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our, cr- crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his wounds we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. Like a lamb he was led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. Please stand so we can continue worship.
Today, around the city, around the country, around the world, people are gathering to reflect and process what Jesus has accomplished for us on the cross. Because God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Individually and as a church body, we cling to what Jesus has accomplished for us on the cross. Now, at Christmas, as a community, we, uh, we light a candle. Let's see if this one will light for me. There. We light a candle at Christmas to symbolize how the true light of the world, the light of hope, has entered the world. But today, it's quite the opposite. A day when that light out of necessity is extinguished. And as you can see, the smoke rising, filling the air, we can remember what James in the New Testament wrote about our lives. He said, you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. Life is but a mist, a vapor that appears and then is gone. Something that seems tangible in the moment, but then is beyond our ability to grasp. Now, while some see death at, say, funerals, they're quick to turn around again and go back to their lives, not wanting to focus on that. Others, though, deeply recognize in those moments their own mortality. And a line from a 
series of <clears throat> familiar books and, uh, or similar books and movies, maybe it offers a metaphor regarding our lives because it points to a deeper reality that I hope we all will or have contemplated. The term is this, dead man walking. An inmate on death row bound for execution was for all intents and purposes a dead man walking. And sin, sometimes called flesh or self in the Bible, it always ends in death. It's a reality that everyone, even in the vapor of our lives, we must face. Early church father Paul, he wrote this, he said, for to set the mind on the flesh is death. For the mind that is set on flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. In effect, even as we live apart from God, we are as dead men walking, and nothing can change that. And if this were the end, it would be the most fatalistic and morbid existence we could imagine. But we know that this is not the end. Jesus, in calling us to follow him, to live as apprentices in the way of him, he called us to forsake everything else to do so. Most importantly, to forsake our flesh to be able to follow him. He said to all, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me. And again, early church leader and father Paul would testify to what this looks like when we die to self. He said, when we were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been uni united in, with him in a death like this, we shall certainly be united with him in a res resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we could no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. And now if we have died with Christ, we believe also that we will live with him. In crucifying our flesh or sin or self, whichever word works in your definition of that, with Christ on the cross, we die and a new life is born. The old us was unable to please God, submit to God, be united with God, but in Christ we live by the Spirit. We are what Jesus calls born again by the Spirit. So how do you see life? How do you see Jesus Christ and the cross? Some today, they will look at the cross but return to living without Christ, which we call being lost. But others will see the cross and they will acknowledge that they too are dead in their sin, needing the sinless one to die the death that they deserve, to gift them the life they could never earn, which is called, again, being saved or being born again, being made new or having new life. So today, are you one who will turn away from a moment like this to get back to living your life? Or are you one who allows his scarlet thread of grace to do for you what you could never do for yourself? 
It's in moments like that that calling on Christ, we cling to what he has done. And in our hearts, we cry what many of us may have cried already, where we say, Jesus, I trust that your death has paid for my sin in full. I repent of my sin. I receive your grace, and I choose to follow you. We pray that in the name of Jesus, knowing that that is the journey and the start of our following him. And today, if that's you, if you've never chosen to follow in that way, we encourage you to take steps of that. In the seat in front of you, you'll see there's a card there to help you in learning what next steps could be. We have Bibles for you where you can take a Bible and start your journey of apprenticing with Jesus and following him. But we'd love to journey with you if that's a new decision for you. Today, while we are contemplating this, while we are holding the thought of Jesus on the cross in our hearts, as his church and as individuals, we are also one. We individually face this, but we also look at this together as his body. And as the body of Christ, when one is joyful, we can all be joyful. And when one is in pain, we feel that pain too. Now from all over Life Center, we have received over 3,000 prayer requests ranging from salvation, fertility, reconciliation, weddings, healings, family hurts, marriages, hanging on by a thread, and even the strength to keep following Jesus. In this moment, as we sit here on Good Friday, clinging to what Christ does for us on the cross, the ultimate healing that he provides for us, let us lift each other up in prayer, that we will see these prayers answered and share in their joy as well. Today, from our, uh, those who lifted up from, or gave us prayer requests, someone said they're praying that they would be able to give up control to God. Somebody else was looking for healing in their body, that their daughter's marriage would be great and better, and that their, their granddaughter's vision would be healed. Somebody else is praying for the salvation of their children and their grandchildren. Some are praying for a home and financial freedom. Some are praying for clarity on what they're supposed to do in serving God and what his plan is for them. Somebody else is praying for stability in their work and career and that they could understand God more than they are already. Let's pray for these and all that they represent. God, we just thank you that you are a God who answers prayer. You answered the ultimate prayer of our cry and our need for a savior. You offered us life when all that we had was death. And just like you answered that, we know you can answer our other requests. So God, we come before you knowing you are a God who heals, a God who restores, a God who saves, a God who sustains, a God who gives wisdom, and a God who blesses. And so God, we ask you today, will you be that God for us today? Will you heal our sorrows and our bodies? Will you restore our marriages? Will you give us firm foundations to walk on? Will you set our hands to work at jobs and careers that will lead us into glorifying you with what we do? We thank you that you will answer prayer. We thank you for this, Jesus. Amen. Today, if you have your communion elements, you can grab them now. We've come here today to remember what God has done for us. 
when you come to participate in a pa- practice that Jesus commanded that we do, that we do while we wait until we can have this meal with him, till we can do it again. We do it consistently to remember where we place our faith. We don't place it in the deeds that we can do, the good things that we try to do, but in the work of Jesus on the cross and in his resurrection. We choose to participate in a death like his so that we can have a life with him as well. So as we examine ourselves before we eat the bread and drink the cup, let us again choose to deny the flesh take up our cross and follow him. Let's take a moment just to examine our hearts today. The Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us eat of the bread. supper he took the cup saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me for whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes we proclaim that death so that we too can die to our sin and be alive with him We continue to proclaim it, to continue to say, his death covers me. Sin has no grip on me anymore. We say this and we do this monthly here as a church to say, Christ has set us free. Let us partake. God, we thank you for the cup. We thank you for the bread. We thank you for these emblems, these symbols that tie us to what you have done for us. And God, we hold on to them to remind us of what you've done for us. That we are not bound by sin anymore. We have been set free The grip of sin which leads to death does not need to hold us anymore. We walk in the light as children of God. May we on this Good Friday see it as just that, a good day when we hold to what you have done for us. Thank you, Jesus. Pray this in your name. Amen. Would you stand for one last song before we dismiss?
today, we will not take this for granted, that we will live a repentant life that walks away from the old and walks in the new that you have given us, that bears the fruit of your spirit overflowing out of our lives. God, I pray that we would choose every day to walk in all that you have for us, which is, which is not minimal. You didn't give your life so we could scrounge a life with you. You gave your life, Jesus, so we could have a full and hope-filled life in you. We could have joy and peace and hope and self-discipline. So we could have all the things that you offer us. And so God, I pray that we would leave behind, leave behind the old, because all that is there is death. Even the things that look desirable in a moment. But God, you offer life. And we choose life today. And we thank you for the life you give. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much. Have an incredible uh, afternoon. Before you go, there's just a few things I want to let you know. Let me just put my glasses on so I can see. First of all, please come back. Tomorrow is waiting Saturday. Uh, some of you have registered. If you haven't registered, come on back anyways. It's okay. We're going to have a continental breakfast, an egg hunt. But most of all, we're going to have a prayer time. And this prayer time is really special. We'll have stations all around this room and possibly even some downstairs with interactive, interactive activities. You can pray, take some time and reflect. And it's all going to be about who Jesus is and praying according to who Jesus is. There'll be crafts and activities that the kids can do. So it's for all ages, whether you're single or married, have kids, have no kids. It doesn't really matter. Come on out, pray with us have breakfast with us, and then there'll be an egg hunt for the kids as well on Sunday. We are going to celebrate the Risen King on Sunday, right? So come on out. Let's celebrate. Let's come ready to declare that he has risen. He has risen. And so we want to be able to do that as well. We want to continue to encourage you. If you made a choice to follow Christ today or recommit your life to Christ, please feel free and come on up and see us. We'll have Bibles here that we can give to you, or you can come and find myself or Pastor Jeff, and we'd love to do that. And, you know, make sure you're taking steps to keep growing in that. It's not just a one-time moment. It's a daily walking out the salvation in God. It's daily letting him transform you, setting aside the old, taking up the new. 
We also have water baptism coming up. And so if you want to get water baptized, that's next Sunday. Uh, and we're going to have an amazing time just celebrating what God is doing in people's lives. And this is an opportunity to declare publicly what God has done in you, that you are letting him transform you, that the old is gone, the old is dead, and the new is alive in you. And before you go, we have an absolutely amazing gift. So yesterday, Jeff was receiving, uh, as you know, we have this outreach called Mobile Mission. Many of you know that. And we get food from Matrix, which is a distribution center for a number, number of stores. They donate. And they called us yesterday and said, we have tons of fresh fruit. And so God has literally the God of abundance, God of abundance, literally tons. It was 2,200 pounds. Yes. And so we have been able to share with all the church campuses to distribute to the people who attend here. So as you leave, we have strawberries and raspberries and blackberries and tomatoes that you're able to pick up as you go. And we just want you to know that this God that we talk about, he is a God of abundance and he produces good fruit in our lives. And he wants to see that be produced in your lives and he wants to produce abundant fruit. And so Come see the goodness of God as we, uh, as we are able to share what he has poured out on our church community. And so have a blessed day. We absolutely love you guys. And we'll see you hopefully tomorrow.